Well, folks, Jimmy Carter did it. He lived to vote for Kamala Harris. He said that was what he was living for, was to get across that finish line and vote for Kamala, and he did it. And I'm so happy to hear that. Uh, Jimmy Carter has always been a hero of mine. He's a hero to our family. Uh, he was the president back when I was born, but uh, he got voted out that year and replaced by a Republican actor. And uh, I remember growing up in the 80s and Reaganomics was not kind to this part of the world. My dad worked two jobs and we still uh, lived on government cheese. Uh, it was a very uh, hard time and I remember my parents telling me about Jimmy Carter and what kind of man he was um, and what kind of president he was. And they always told me that Jimmy Carter was one of us. And when I grew up and could learn for myself and read for myself and understand things, I realized one thing, and that is my parents didn't lie to me that Jimmy Carter truly was one of us. He was a decent, hardworking, honest Southerner who, in all honesty, was too honest to be the president. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Jimmy Carter was the greatest president of all time. I don't even think he would tell you that. But Jimmy Carter definitely was the greatest ex-president that we ever had because Jimmy Carter continued to roll up his sleeves. And by the way, he didn't whine. He didn't cry fake news. He didn't say that the election was rigged. He, we had a peaceful transfer of power. He handed over the reins to Ronald Reagan and then worked alongside every president after that uh, for the better of this country. He rolled up his sleeves and went to work for people every day. Jimmy Carter is the true embodiment of what an American is. He's the true embodiment of what a patriot is and what a Southerner is and also what a Christian is. Uh, I may be agnostic, but I believe in Jimmy Carter. And I believe that if more people had have tried to emulate Jimmy Carter, I think a lot of us might have hung around the church a little bit longer. The reason why we got up and walked out, people like me, is because the church got so far away from the words in red. They got so far away from what uh, Jesus Christ taught and got so deep into the MAGA cult that uh, people like us couldn't stick around and embrace that. And anyone that's watched my channel for any period of time knows that one of my biggest pet peeves in this world is the way that the mainstream media portrays Southern culture. Anytime they want to dumb down a character, they just give it a Southern accent. And they always give us ridiculous names like Goober and Gomer and Enos and Cletus and Billy Bob. And uh, I, I'm, not, no, I'm not throwing shade toward the Andy Griffith show when I say that, okay? I'm a huge Andy Griffith fan. Anyone that knows me knows that I am. But there came a point where the media figured out how to capitalize on Southern culture, how to dumb it down, make us look like the biggest idiots in the world. And then the Republican Party figured out, you know, when Nixon started the whole Southern strategy, they figured out how to manipulate people in my part of the world and get people to vote against their own interest and go against everything that we were ever taught or raised to believe in. Um, they convinced people that Democrats were of the devil. And because Jimmy Carter had a D by his name, then they always found ways to make jokes at his expense. They always found ways to laugh at him. And yet they embraced someone like Donald Trump. I thought when I saw the church embrace George W. Bush that that was bad. But watching them embrace Donald Trump was something I never really thought I would see. I gave them the benefit of the doubt. I really believed, no, they won't go there. there. That's a bridge too far. But it wasn't. Uh, Donald Trump showed uh, just how much hatred they still had in their heart. He showed the bigotry and the racism they had in their heart, and he brought it out. And uh, ministers that I sat under that used to try to make me feel guilty for everything I ever did wrong uh, and used to make the altar call and try to, you know, scare me into coming up to the altar, sat back and just ushered in Donald Trump and did it with no shame whatsoever. Meanwhile, they demonized Jimmy Carter. And, you know, if they had have actually emulated Jimmy Carter more, if they had have actually lived the life that Jimmy Carter has led, because I've never seen Jimmy Carter beat anyone over the head with his religion. I've just saw him live by example. I've never saw Jimmy Carter go off on some tirade about how that if you didn't vote for him, you weren't American or you weren't, you, you know, you were the enemy from within or you were poisoning the blood or you should be dealt with by the military. I just saw Jimmy Carter live by example. I never saw Jimmy Carter inviting people to church or demanding that you show up to church. Uh, he just got out there and he lived the life that you're supposed to live. And that's inspirational to me. And if the media had have portrayed Southern people that way, then we wouldn't be a laughing stock around the world. And the Republican Party wouldn't have been able to cash in on us the way they did if people like us had have actually read the Bible and lived it the way that a Jimmy Carter did. He's a true example. And, you know, I'm agnostic. I don't really know what happens after we leave this world. Um, but I've had people say to me, Brando, I believe deep down you're a believer. 
And to them, I would say this. I believe in Jimmy Carter. And I believe in what Jimmy Carter stood for. And if every Christian led the life that Jimmy Carter has led, then it would be more inspirational to me, and I would probably want to be part of that. Uh, but I don't want to go sit in a church and listen to a minister make me feel guilty for everything I ever did. Meanwhile, he's up there calling Donald Trump a, a patriot and saying that Donald Trump is like King David and sometimes God calls assholes to do their work. I'm not going to sit under that. And I've lost all respect for the ministers in my part of the world. I have zero for the ones uh, that goes out of their way to put Donald Trump over like he's some sort of Christian. Meanwhile, they sit back and demonize Jimmy Carter. It's the most uh, despicable thing I've ever seen. And uh, I'll never grace their door again. I'll never sit under them. And if I hear them come on the radio, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it off. Um, I got a cousin. He maybe watches this video. Uh, he sends me some clips from time to time of a local pastor uh, saying some of his MAGA BS. And I say to myself, you know, back when I was growing up, that dude used to talk about wolves in sheep's clothing. That dude used to talk about people that would come along and try to grift and drift, grift and uh, trick people and um, and would be a wolf in sheep's clothing. But yep, he's right there on the Trump train. And the reason he's on the Trump train is because he has the same hatred in his heart that Donald Trump has. And he's just putting it out there now for the world to see. And he's unapologetic about it. Well, I'm unapologetic in the, in the sense that I'm never going to fall for that bullshit. I'm unapologetic in the sense that I'm over here on my side of the aisle and I oppose that and I always will. I really wish that the media had have embraced Jimmy Carter. I wish the churches had have embraced Jimmy Carter. I wish that's the way that Southern people were portrayed uh, instead of the life and stock that it's all become. Um, Jimmy Carter is a true hero. He showed us what it's like to be an American. He showed us what it's like to be a patriot. And he showed us what it's like to stand on the right side of history. And even in the final final moments of his life, he's still thinking about American democracy. He's still wanting to go to bat for it. He's still trying to stand up for that truth and stand up against that tyranny. And he will always have my respect. I think he's one of the greatest human beings that ever walked the earth. And if more people live the life of Jimmy Carter, then I think you would see more people turning to the church. I think you would see more people turning to that. But uh, as long as the church embraces the likes of Donald Trump, they're just going to continue to diminish and they're going to continue to become irrelevant and more and more people are going to walk away and they're going to sit back and wonder why. They're going to sit back and wonder why people are walking away. The, people aren't walking away because they have hate in their heart. People aren't walking away because the devil made them do it. They're walking away because the ministers around here have hate in their heart and they're preaching it from the pulpit. And they're demonizing people like Jimmy Carter and they're making Donald Trump into a saint and reasonable people who can read sees through it. That's what's happening. I, I see so many, I've heard so many ministers around here, well, the devil's getting in people. The devil's causing people to walk away from the church. No, you are. You're the reason people are walking away because people sees through it. People sits there and watches you demonize a man like Jimmy Carter and make jokes at his expense and laugh at him. And then you stand up and you get behind a convicted felon who's cheated on every wife he ever had, cheated on one with a porn star while she was pregnant with his kid. You made all of us feel guilty for every time we ever went out to the Mustang Lounge and had a good night. And you want to sit back and embrace that garbage and make us feel guilty and say, we're going to hell. Well, if there is a hell, you better really read your book a little bit closer because it definitely talks about what's going to happen to the false prophets. It definitely talks about what's going to happen to the people who fall for that bullshit and uh, if you sat and warned me my entire life about an antichrist and then you bought a Bible off of him, you were full of shit from day one. And I don't trust a word that comes out of your mouth and never will. So um, I'm glad Jimmy Carter made it over that finish line. I'm glad he got to vote for Kamala Harris. I hope that he lives to see her uh, sworn in and can rest knowing that he did his part to save American democracy. So thanks to Jimmy Carter for one hell of a life he's lived. Uh, that's a that's the true Southern hero. Uh, that's that's the Southerner that we should all emulate, and not this goofy slapstick Jason Aldean crap they put out there for you to emulate. Try to be like Jimmy Carter. Maybe we should start a What Would Jimmy Carter Do? Let, let's put that on a bracelet. Um, because if you lived your life like Jimmy Carter, then you would definitely be a person I'd want to hang around.